grace to you, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew chapter 24 is a dark and seemingly sinister chapter in the Bible as Jesus describes for his disciples the end of the world. It starts with the disciples innocently pointing to the grandeur of Herod's temple, which is met by the Lord's reply, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. He immediately begins describing various signs of the end of the age, warning that an abomination in the temple would mark the time to flee the city, even as he described the coming of the Son of Man while revealing the signs that would be evident to all. His words are ominous and foreboding, as we pick up at verse 36 and following, which are today's gospel reading. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, and the day, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So far the word of the Lord. As we saw last week, the last day will come when God decides to execute his judgment and send Jesus in his glory to gather the children of men before his holy throne. Three times, Jesus points out that the end times come at God's deciding. He has not and will not let anyone else in on his plan. Concerning that day and hour, no one knows, he says. And then he follows up with a double warning. Stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. And then also, you must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now while Jesus is certain of his return, he didn't know the exact time. He shared some signs for the disciples to keep an eye out for, and yet they're not all that exact, such as, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. We take note that Jesus' primary emphasis is on our being watchful, our being ready. What we hear is a call to faithfulness as we live in the hope of what is to come. Twice the Lord remind, exhorts us to be mindful of the suddenness of his return. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Our motivation is to be in service to Christ and a meaningful faith walk with him, not from a fear of the end. I mean, all things come to an end, be it a good book, a captivating movie, or a personal endeavor. Life on this side of heaven is marked by endings. And to be honest, it's not easy to come to an end of anything. But with each ending comes a new beginning. If there's no ending, there's no new beginning. And what makes endings hard is that in-between time. What was has to go away before we can begin to see what can be or what will be. Now, there's always a comfort with what was. So, subsequently, we're not all that quick to embrace what is new. The in-between times are often a struggle as we let go of what we're comfortable with in order to embrace an unknown. The new is foreign to us. It appears strange because it's not what we have become accustomed to. Life in the in-between is hard as we let go of what we're comfortable with and experience a new beginning that we're unsure of. The end times mark both an ending and a new beginning. The final revelation of the kingdom of God 
and our entry into it. Now just prior to this morning's reading, Jesus had told his disciples, saying, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I know that that sounds like some scary stuff as we hear these words. But what we ought to be mindful of is what he says next in verse 31. And he, the Son of Man, will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Understand this. What is new for us in the end times is the manifestation and the reality of God's promised kingdom. What has been promised of old is going to be realized. The end of the kingdoms of men ushers in the beginning of our forever life with God in his heavenly kingdom. In a place that he has already made for it, ready for us, as Jesus tells his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Forever life with God is what we anticipate, the new beginning we long for. When the end times come and the things of this earth pass away, eternity with God begins for us. Thus, we wait for the, glorious, for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know the end is coming, and we are told what the new beginning will be. But what do we do in the in-between time? We'll look again at our gospel reading. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Life in the in-between doesn't really change for us. We still have an existence to be played out on this side of heaven. We wait, await being taken to God's side of heaven, but for now, in the in-between, we go about our lives, faithfully living and working, loving God, loving others, repeat. Jesus pictures us as his disciples in the world, called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified by the work of the Holy Spirit, as Luther teaches. We are to be his called out and sent out people, living in the world, serving in the world, sharing the gospel of Jesus with the world. Knowing that then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. We are to live each day with an eye open and an ear listening for Christ's return. With all things being said, Jesus has told his disciples about the end times in order to prepare them to be ready. While not giving us an exact date and time, the Lord has given signs to be on the watch for. But his key point is that we need to be ready. He says, but you know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Greek of the original text suggests this type of a situation, that there was a known burglar in town, and people had been warned to be on the lookout. Instead, this particular homeowner chose to sleep, and his house was broken into and was robbed. If he had been awake at the time that the burglar elected to strike, he perhaps could have stopped him, but he did not. He knew the thief was around, but he chose to sleep rather than be watchful. And what's the Lord's conclusion to his little story? Don't be that guy. 
though he puts it this way, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming. Christ will come again. He has promised, and we know that he keeps his promises in his good time. Now, it's been a long time since Jesus uttered these words to Peter, James, and John, and the rest of the boys. We know that there is an end, and that there's a new beginning to come. But right now, we're in this in-between time of uncertainty. We see some of the prophesied signs all around us. War in Ukraine. Rumors of war with Russia or China or North Korea or even all three at once. We live in the days where tribulation and lawlessness and immorality and perversion all abound. We long for Christ to come again, and he will. But for now, we wait eagerly for him, doing the work he has given us to do while we wait. We keep watch. We stand ready. For he who testifies of these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Indeed. And now may this, the grace of God, give you peace, hope, and joy in the coming of Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all God's people said, amen.